Should you choose a virtual or telephone or video hearing as opposed to an in-person disability hearing before an administrative law judge? I'm Jonathan Ginsberg. I'm a social security disability attorney. I represent clients in all 50 states, literally from Maine to California, and I'm doing that because most hearings are now virtual. Uh, but the question does come up, should somebody choose an in-person hearing? Social Security is now offering in-person hearings if you want that. Um, although, interestingly enough, the default, and this all changed with the pandemic, but the default now is virtual hearings. And there's many reasons for that. I'm going to go into that in a little bit. But the big picture here is should you choose a virtual hearing? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Um, my take is there's really not much in the way of disadvantages. I think that uh, virtual hearings make everybody's life a lot easier. I think for judges, one of the big things is they can schedule their hearing calendar and the hearings run on time because with the virtual hearing, what happens is the judge will say, okay, we're starting at 11. We need to be done by 11.55 because I've got another hearing. If you want to have any more than that, then we'll have a supplemental hearing. Nobody wants a supplemental hearing, so uh, typically the hearings run on time. In-person hearings, I will tell you, after doing them for 30 years, uh, many times judges would get behind. People would show up late. There'd be technical issues, whatever might happen. And, you know, you have a hearing at 2 o'clock. It wouldn't be held till 4.30. You don't want a judge running late on a Friday afternoon at 4.30 uh, trying to get through the calendar because things were, people were running late and falling behind. So I think that's one big reason. It just makes the scheduling work a lot easier. The second thing is I think everybody's more comfortable with a video or telephone hearing. And I really actually, I, I'd probably say I'd do about 80% telephone hearings and they work really just great. Um, and I think the big reason for that is that when you do a telephone hearing or video hearing, uh, vir we'll, call them, we'll call them virtual hearings from here on out, you're at home. You're comfortable. You're in your living room, your bedroom, where you're comfortable. You have not had to deal with an hour of fighting traffic and paying for parking and dealing with um, all kind of nonsense trying to get to a hearing office you've never been to before. You're going to be more relaxed um, when you get to the when you go to the hearing. It's basically you know you, typically what I do is I call my clients you know the, the f several days before we go over things. I'll call them the morning of the hearing. Are you ready? Any last minute questions? They're ready to go. When, when it's in person, I can't tell you. How many times I would have a hearing, again, let's say at 11 o'clock, and the person would show up at 1057 because they had trouble finding a place to park. They're just not in a good place mentally. So I think that it should you can be a lot more comfortable if you do a video, virtual hearing. Um, and I think you're just going to do better in terms of your testimony. And for the judges, it's the same thing. A lot of times they do these virtual hearings from their home office. They're comfortable. They've just had a nice breakfast. Um, they're not having to fight traffic and deal with all the hacking and coughing in the, in the hearing room. And for, realize from their perspective, you know, you're a judge. Um, let's say you're in your late 40s or late 50s, and you know you're in a, in a small room. The hearing rooms are not very big, and people are coming in all day long, and they may be hacking and coughing. They may have you know kids with them who pick something up at school. You're in a small room. And, you know, you're likely to pick something up, and judges don't want to pick anything up. And so, you know, it's just they're more comfortable. They're happier, I think, with the virtual hearing as well. I think that's a, that's a really important factor. And like I said, the, the travel issue. You know, you, you travel to a hearing office. If it's in a downtown area, you could be paying $15 or $20 for parking. Well, if you haven't worked in a couple of years waiting for your hearing, you may not have that $15 or $20 extra. That money needs to go to medicine or medical care or something else as opposed to parking for an hour and a half uh, because of your hearing. Um, so I think that it's just it, it's, a, it's a less expensive way to, to do it. Um, now, there are people who say, well, hey, Jonathan, you know, I'd like an in-person hearing because I want the judge to see me with a cast on. Or I want the judge to see me limping or using a cane um, or my scar tissue, things like that. Well, I don't think that applies either because under Social Security law, judges are not allowed to use what they call sit and squirt jurisprudence. And what that means is a judge cannot approve you or deny you because of the way you present yourself at a hearing. In other words, the judge can't say at the hearing he didn't look disabled um, because there's no way to really tell what somebody looks who's disabled looks like. Um, and a judge is not going to want to see your scar or your you know swollen foot, things like that. They're, they're not doctors. They're going to look at the medical record. So, you know, ha having a judge see you limp in uh, is not going to really do anything. If anything, you know, it's going to raise the question in the judge's mind, are you 
in enhancing that are you you know being you know, overdoing it as far as the, the way you look um, so I just think that there's really no great benefit to doing it in person now I will admit that there is some sort of a connection sometimes you make with the judge when you're in person they, they're talking to you but again you can get that from video you can get that from telephone um, if you're properly prepared I will tell you again after doing this for over 30 years the most important thing and I'll go 85 90 percent of whether you win or lose is what the medical record says and if you have a strong medical record with objective tests there's MRIs there's CTs there's EMGs there's ultrasounds that show a significant problem um, the medical record shows you've been compliant you've done everything the doctors wanted you to do your testimony is consistent with all that the other forms you filled out are consistent with all that you're not doing activities that are inconsistent with um, what your medical records suggest you should be able to do you're going to win based on that it's it's not you're not going to convince a judge in other words i've never been to a hearing where the medical record had really nothing in it um, and the judge says well, I, I believe this person i want to approve him now it used to be a number of years ago that credibility was an actual factor in a disability case and several years ago social security eliminated that as something that judges should consider so even though they still do i mean clearly if a judge thinks you're just completely you know misrepresenting things uh, they'll find another reason to deny you but you won't see in hearing decisions I did not find this person credible because of X Y and Z uh, what the judge might say is the evidence the testimony as well as a written evidence described activities let's say in a back pain case that are not consistent with what MRI showed so again if you've got you know two herniated discs and spinal stenosis and nerve root impingement yet the medical record in your testimony indicates that you're driving for six hours to visit family uh, every other month and you're going to the grocery store by yourself for 30 minutes um, and you're not using the uh, you know you're not using any sort of support like the little carts the mechanical carts they do and they're you're picking up three or four bags of grocery and going up four flights of stairs that's not consistent but that's something that's going to be that's not going to change if you're in person so the point is is that you know that's really about preparation and when I prepare my clients we go over the questions that are likely to be asked and again what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the objective evidence what it says I'll ask my client to talk about activities and we'll talk about you know are these activities what the person is doing of course you, you got to tell the truth um, but sometimes people overstate what they're able to do or they understate it and in preparation we, we come up with um, a narrative a story that is consistent with what reality is and also what the medical record is and I think that's what you want to present to the judge big picture also my experience again has been the more you say to hearing it's not going to help you hearings are there really to confirm what the medical record says so um, you can you can talk yourself out of a victory you're not going to talk yourself into one really the less said the better in many cases let the medical record speak for itself so as I said a video or telephone hearing um, is going to be uh, I think a good way to do that you want to present yourself no matter how what format as a as a reluctant but deserving claimant who's tried everything you possibly can to get back to work but your condition won't let you and, the, and that the goal would be to get back to work if medically possible um, and I think you can make that come across with preparation in a telephone hearing in a video hearing um, and just want to be very down to earth very matter of fact and very truthful because again even though credibility is not a formal factor it still does remain as a factor judges are going to look at you and, and will listen to you and want to know you know is this person uh, sincere about their beliefs and, and you know during pre-hearing we talk about you know ways to do that you know for example and this is subject from, from different videos but you know don't say I'm in you know level 10 pain on a 1 to 10 scale 24 hours a day seven days a week that's not credible but more credible it's to say you know my pain spikes it may spike up to an eight or nine you know three or four times a day for an hour or something like that or I have to take a rest break you know for 30 40 to 40 minutes three times a week as opposed to every day I'm I'm in I'm in bed for you know seven hours uh, during the work day that sort of thing so again I think this is more about preparation but my experience big picture has been whether you do it by phone or video it really or, or in person it does not matter if anything I'm probably getting better results uh, because of the intangible factors with phone or video so 
that's my recommendation. Um, and, and again, if you want an in-person hearing, that's fine, uh, but I don't think there's any real advantages to it. Again, my opinion. Um, want more information about disability? I've got a Secrets to Winning Disability Survival Kit, which you can download from my website at ssdanswers.com. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, like it on Facebook, and leave me a comment if you have any questions. So again, my name is Jonathan Ginsberg, and I do wish you nothing but the best. Thanks a lot. Hi, this is Jonathan Ginsberg, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you'd like to know more about how to win your Social Security Disability case, I'd like to invite you to download my Secrets to Getting Approved Early Survival Kit that I created just for people like you. Currently, I'm making the survival kit available at no cost, and I encourage you to grab your copy now. Some of the topics I cover include, how do I know if I have a case? Is it the right time for me to file my claim? Nine common mistakes that can doom your case. The three must-have arguments you use to win your case. And a topic that every disability claimant wants to know, how to avoid trick questions from the judge. If you or a loved one need to win Social Security Disability Benefits, you'll find the Survival Kit Essential Reading. Download your Survival Kit right now and at no cost. Just visit ssdanswers.com backslash survival and sign up. It's that easy. Please act now. And as always, I wish you the best.